morning, everyone. We are in Il Houdic, which is a little island off the French coast. Very, very beautiful and very charming. We've been here for a couple of days. We have fallen in love with it. It is just so gorgeous. We are tied up to a big mooring buoy along with one, two, three, four, five other boats right now. There were a total of 13 boats on here last night, but a lot of them have left this morning. Um, and we are also going to leave. So today we are heading over to Belle Isle, which is a nearby island. Very, very beautiful as the name suggests. We've got about a 15 mile sail. And uh, yeah, but our first challenge is obviously to extract ourselves from um, this mooring situation. Um, to do that, ideally we would have our neighbors, but they don't seem to be around. So um, yeah, we're gonna have to have a little think about how we're gonna do this. But anyway, let's go. I don't think we've got any of our own lines on board. I think it's their lines and their lines. Yeah, you're right. They, they've gone aboard, they've gone ashore, so yeah. we just need them. Yeah? Okay. They're still on board, are they? Yeah, but the dinghy's there, and it's like some ashore they should be, yeah. <clears throat> okay. That's right. not sarcastic, sometimes they just swim ashore. <laughs> we've seen them swim ashore. Okay, um, I'll knock on their hand and tell them. Okay. Yeah, you ready? Are we off? some fish today are we? Yes. <laughs> you put the bigger lure on? Yes. I put the massive, yes it's a bigger lure and I think we bought it here. Yeah. The stuff we bought in the, I remember when we were in France a couple of years, well before someone's like ah oh, whatever lures you've got for Europe you can't use in the Caribbean they're too small but yeah it, it's patently obvious that the lures we have are all uh, for um, Caribbean fishing. Right. So you got a, a you know a hook the size of Captain Hook's hook. It ain't gonna work. You're trying to catch a bloody mackerel. Um, so I think these are some of our European lures that have been pulled out. My Caribbean lures. No, these are European lures. That oh right, okay. I thought, oh, brilliant. I think we bought this one uh, off the coast of Portugal, actually. Well, let's hope we catch something today. Fingers crossed. Are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. Getting a bit closer. <laughs> well, I told you that the, 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 I just literally typed in the rum line. So, you know, it goes to, as with all the courses we ever plot, 16 or 17 different um, rocks, islands, shoals, submarine grounds. It'd be handy if they could, like, automatically take you around them. Yeah, there is a way, there is a way of doing it, actually. Yeah, uh, that's right, you have to, like, put in what your like how far you want to be from certain things and what your depth, depth, depth is, but it's still, it's, 
No, I do. No, I think Can you just um, shoot the jib in a little bit? Yeah, are you happy? Yeah. So it wants me, where does that want to go? As I said, don't it follow. It wants me to go through that rock right there. Yeah, I've just. Uh... So I'll go between that rock and the island. Is there enough water between the two? Yeah, there's loads. That's belly over there, right? Yeah. Sure is. Dolphins in ages. Where are you? Come on, just saw you. Where are you? Over there. Why you come back here? Maybe they're not dogs. Wow. Oh, here they come. Come on, come this way. You know you want to. No. Going in the wrong direction. They've obviously got enough boats that they can play with. Normally they come up and. Uh, they come up and say hello. I was just thinking that we haven't seen dolphins in ages and uh, then they just appear. But unfortunately they didn't want to come and play. Usually they come and like play in the bow for a while. They kind of just had a quick look at us and then left. Oh well. I think they've got enough boats around here to play with that we definitely weren't a novelty. <laughs> Still no fish. We changed the lure over to a like mackerel one. <laughs> Didn't make any difference. <laughs> I can see the um, anchorage from here and it looks pretty full. I think the anchorage is only like able to be used when the mooring boys are pretty much full. So this is going to be a little interesting. I'm very much hoping there's a space. I mean I have to say that in all the places we've been, you know, if ever there's like this mentality of the more the merrier, it's in France. Like. <laughs> There's space even when there's no space, um, but yeah, hopefully finding a space isn't, isn't too difficult. Right, so the plan is to go to the inner, the inner harbour. There's three sections, the outer harbour, the inner harbour and then the drying creek. We're at low water at the moment, so the drying creek is not an option. <laughs> when they say dry and they really mean it, it's definitely, it dries out completely. Um, and so we're going to go to the inner harbour and hopefully pick up a boy. It looks a little bit crowded, but that being said, I can see some boys in the outer harbour. I think I can. So I think we'll be okay. My main concern is I have to use this like thing, this boat hook thing, and I hate it because I can never. I don't know, I've just got a block when it comes to this. I can never use it properly, so anyway. <laughs> See how that goes. There's also a free boy. Can you get that? I'm sure that we can, yeah. I'm sure that we can, I just don't know the depth there. In that case, we're gonna go alongside, I think the best bet for us, babe, is probably this red boat. It's about the same size as ours. The one with the red spray hood, yeah? The maroon spray hood. Shit, where did they come from? Is 
okay? We're just going to be midline to midline. We're going to need to hold ourselves onto that boat, yeah? Or, okay, bow. Bow then, put the bow, a bow line on, yeah? Yeah. Well, I can't see what I'm doing, so you're going to have to count me in. Okay. Go back. Major and a half. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Slow down. Hi, babe. You got about a meter and a half between the boats. Well done, Therese. Okay, just hold on to the other boat, my love. You're just pretending. Slowly lowering my testicles into the <laughs> Lovely. Here we are in Belle Isle and it is um, stunningly beautiful. It is also absolutely sweltering. A, a fact that we didn't really appreciate when we were out in the water this morning and obviously the temperatures have been rising throughout the day but yeah as soon as we got in a tide up we were like whew warm Actually. yeah it's warm it's beautiful we haven't had warm weather like this in a while when was the last time we were this hot i think australia my parents garden is pretty hot for a bit but not like this not like this no. you you can't work out what you want can you you want to go for a swim but you also are scared of the water I'm scared of the water <laughs> you know, it's like some sort of bloody some of the rabies and you would get a rise out of it if i said that <laughs> I don't like it. Look, just get in. Just don't like it. Jump in. No. <laughs> I'm not designed for cold water. I didn't expect you to actually go in. Well, look, you're in now. There's no point holding onto the boat. <laughs> <laughs> go fly free. Oh. You might as well let go, babe. No, you can't let go. You have to, because you're in. That's God, it. It's cold. Come on, this isn't a swim. You cannot claim that you've been for a swim. You have to let go. I can't. Everyone else on the internet is going to be saying, yep, <laughs> yep, your shoulders are under. And look, look how pale you are. You really do need to get some sun. <laughs> <laughs> you look like, why are you... Like a little squid. <laughs> why are you floating so well? You look like, you're, you look like a tourist on the, the Dead Sea. You know, that really salty sea. I'm saltying my arm. You are floating my well. my head. He never realised he was the Messiah till he went to Belil. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised that Nick got in. He must have been, uh, he must be desperate. He actually seems to be enjoying himself right now. Is it nice though? Now you're in. If I find my bathers, will you wait for me? If you're quick. Alright, I'll be 30. I mean quick. I'll be 30 seconds or less. I'll be 30 seconds or less. How long was that? You need to make quick pictures, do you? I know. I actually need my bed as well, which I'm quite surprised about. <laughs> that is actually quite chilly. Yeah. Some, whoa. How are you in here? What? Oh. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, what? I don't know about this. Don't. You stay away from me. Get in. I don't know if I want to now. Hang on. Oh, oh no! Come on, little Dutch girl. It's cold. In. After all the shit you gave me, you can get in. You knew that I was giving you shit just to taunt you. Oh, and look how you ended up. <laughs> now look where I am. In. But I can't like, jump onto the dinghy. Teresa, just get in. Get on with it. All right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it was cold. Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. That was pretty uh, refreshing. You better for that? Yeah, they woke me up. I was feeling well, really dozy up until then.
we've discovered through a significant amount of trial and error that um, Nick and I both handling the oars at the same time is uh, completely counterproductive. It sounds like splitting the work in half and it actually just completely doubles the work, if not triples. Like we just literally go around in circles. Oh, they've got a tenor guys here. Uh, what a beautiful sight, hey? Eh? So I guess we aim for over there and there's a ladder. Uh, a little bit around. No, no. I want to take it up a little bit more. I don't know how much more. What, what time's high water? About seven? Three hours, so we're about mid tide. Yeah, I'll take it up a bit more. Well, if it's on the most rung, then surely I'm not going to get caught out. Oh, there's a lot of people here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Made it ashore. It is so lovely and warm. Isn't it, babe? I don't even think it's warm, I think it's hot. Yeah, it's hot. Okay. Yeah, I need to put my hair up. And this is the charming village of Sazon. Belle Ile indeed. Pretty yeah. island. It is pretty. It's beautiful. We've been here three times now. Um, and we keep coming back. It is it's a little bit touristy, I would say, but compared to the other islands, it is set up clearly for tourists. There's lots of dockside bars, there's lots of kind of restaurants all dockside, which is completely unlike where we were the other day. But this is, it's just, it is so pretty here. There are some lovely cl cliff walks. It's fairly rugged, isn't it? I mean, we've talked about this, how we've gone from uh, Ile d'Oléron, which was completely flat, and then Ile Dieu, which was completely flat. And then now with the big granite islands. But this has got like natural harbours. We're tied up on a mooring ball, um, fore and aft. And... It, yeah, it's just, it's stunning. Absolutely stunning and we're looking forward to spending a few days here. We've actually got some work to do. We've got to get on the internet and start editing so we can bring content to you. And we'll get the wind generator going to power the old laptops. And yeah, stay here and as I said, I'm very, very happy. Even happier that someone is bringing me a beer. Mm. <laughs> so our plan tomorrow is to go and explore the perimeter of the island. There's a really beautiful coastal walk to do. We've done it a couple of times before. So tomorrow is going to be better for walking. It's going to be a little bit um, cooler, a little bit more cloud, I hope. And um, yeah, today we, we definitely could not have gone for a, a lengthy hike. It just would have been way too warm. The fact that Nick went swimming, that shows you how hot it was. <laughs> like, he does not get into cold water unless he is literally melting. I'm looking forward to the next few days here. In that episode, we mention the tide situation and how it was affecting our passage plan. And also when we got into Belle Isle, uh, it affected where we were going to tie up because obviously we couldn't go into the drying harbour, it was dry. And then there was a mooring ball that we were a bit iffy about tying up to because we didn't know the depth. Can you get that? I'm sure that we can, I just don't know the depth there. 
and it occurred to me really that a lot of you might not actually know what we we're talking about there because I know that a lot of our viewers aren't active sailors you guys are in perhaps a dreaming stage or maybe you just like watching our videos and you've never set foot on a boat before and you never intend to so we thought maybe some explanation was in order for those of you who aren't familiar with this kind of uh, jargon and this kind of information those of you who do know about tides and how they affect sailors then you know obviously you can either carry on watching or you can switch off and watch another one of our episodes which I'll link to just up there. So let's get on with a quick explanation of tides and how they affect us as sailors. And now a few words about tides and tidal ranges. The earth is a sphere surrounded by water. The earth's water is pulled around its surface by the pull of the sun and the moon. When the sun and the moon are aligned, you get the pull in one uniform direction and you get spring tides. When they are not aligned, you get less of a uniform pull and you get deep tides. And so you get different tidal ranges at different times of the month. So when we calculate tides, we don't need to just look at the tidal range, we also need to look at what stage of the month it is. Now we, when we look for this, we use numerous sources and don't get caught out here, you do have to consult yeah. different <laughs> sources. You need to look at almanacs, you need to look at, we use, we got caught out actually mm. using a Garmin version that was out. Um, and although it was meant to be up to date, so we find that the best way of getting accurate tides is normally the local marina office. Now in Brittany, because of its geographic location, you've got a huge body of water that flows in from the Atlantic and flows back out. That whole body of Atlantic water flowing in and flowing out with the, with the moon means that the tidal ranges, as I said, you get 10 meters, 30 foot between high and low on a spring, and we need to navigate that. Now that basically means that between high water and low water, you are going to get between six and seven hours. So if you are, for instance, tying up a dinghy, you need to be aware that between, if you're away for two hours and you have got, say for instance, a big 10 meter tide, the tidal range changes. You don't get a constant flow of water out. It tends to go in a curve. And as a rule of thumb, in the first third of that tide, you get less movement the middle section of the tide you get the greatest amount of movement and then as it comes to slack water the movement goes less and there's a, a pretty cool graph that you can work out that where you cut everything into twelfths to work out how much water you're going to lose but for instance if you are going to tie up a dinghy it's a, you know mid tide flow um, leave it for a few hours you could find that it comes down and we've seen this before with the dinghy just hanging from the painter completely clear of you know cl clear of the water or if you tie a paint up too tight then your dinghy might be underwater yeah, when you it, get back so you know all these calculations need to be made they're not particularly complicated for tying a dinghy up and that's yeah. a pretty simple explanation <laughs> but when you're working with tidal gates that's another thing you know sailing around Britain, especially in coastal waters, you need to be able to uh, kind of use the tide with you. So if you've got six or seven hours of, of, of tide, of, of, of favorable tide, you want to carry that tide. And that does unfortunately mean for us sometimes getting up an ungodly hour to make sure that we catch the tide exactly where we should do. Now those tide, that tide, you know, in, in places like the Alderney Race, that can run up to nine, ten knots. So it's not it's not a little bit of assist, it is a huge amount of assist and you will see in subsequent videos that we've got coming out over the next couple of months where we ended up in really big tidal gates where yes we got the boat going backwards once, we, we, we screwed it up so badly that we had um, the, we managed even with full power on that engine to get the boat going backwards and we simply had to turn around to, to get to find ourselves you know to, to find a better place to get across a river. I'm pretty sure we're not moving, look Look at that transit. Yeah, we're not moving. We're not moving. Wow, this is bad. Yeah, the book did say that between the islands, it's particularly bad. But you know, it's 40 minutes after low water. But I think the water, I don't understand the tides around here because obviously low water at the mouth of the, of the Morbion, it, like it's slack, it was slack there 40 minutes ago, but it's still on the ebb here. So I think that there's a lag, I don't know, I don't understand. Probably we should have, <laughs> we should have 
bought like a large scale chart before we came in here and checked all the tides out, but we didn't. So tidal calculations are really important. We'll show you the almanacs, how we do it, and then we always try to build in a little bit of, of you know of a safety margin so that if we do get caught out and we're working with a particularly strong tidal gate that we like we're not going to get pushed backwards so that's another thing so working with tides to make sure you, it, they go with you when you're when you're sailing the third thing you need to be aware of is that a lot of the ports in france but this isn't just france it's all around the world we've already mentioned charleston you have got an opportunity to get into into your port which is normally you know from a point before high water to a point after high water and the the first and the last hour are a little bit sketchy mm -hmm. you always want to try and get into port on a rising tide so in britain we found that you know the almanacs the the pilot books will tell you um what the access times are and it's pretty important to get in there as soon as it opens because if you do ground the boat on a rising tide you just wait it out. If you grind it, if you ground the boat on a on a, on a falling tide and you don't have a lift keel, mm -hmm. you end up waiting there sometimes. You know, for for a long time. Yeah. The other thing is you can also get neeped, and we've had friends that have got neeped, and what that means is that you ground the boat at the apex of a very high spring tide, and then for the next fourteen days the tide doesn't make that again. So be aware that sometimes if you really stuff up your tidal calculations you can start growing herbs around <laughs> your boat i hope you guys found that useful if you did or indeed if you didn't then leave us a comment down below and we'll try and clarify a few things if there are any questions outstanding and otherwise we will be putting out loads more videos in the coming weeks and a lot of them do relate to us going through these tidal gates that we were referring to so make sure that you subscribe to our channel click the notification bell so that you are notified when we put out a video and give us a thumbs up and we will see you next week with another episode bye bye bye, bye. 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 Yeah. how beautiful is this right so gorgeous we always try and give you an episode of what it's actually like to live on a boat and it's not all sunshine and flowers everyone will be able to hear you winging <laughs> that's gonna get the views <laughs> I have no idea how they are mooring up. Their bow just keeps on bashing against our side. And it's one of those days where it's not windy, there's no cloud, sorry, there's no sun. And uh, so we've had like no, almost no power going into the batteries. We've got some heavy weather coming in. We are moored for an aft. I think the wind's gonna be about 25 knots, so the wind generator should power the boat completely. Why are we suddenly, after five years of living on board and happily meeting out, energy requirements mm -hmm. why are we suddenly unable to do that if you would like to support our video production then please check out our patreon page our patrons receive all sorts of perks and benefits including chat groups live streams early access to videos and loads more let me start again so make sure that you subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell so that you are notified when we put out a video. I hope you guys found that useful and thank you so much for watching this week's episode uh, for another... That's it. Yep. So listen, lovely to see you all. We'll see you again next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Was it okay?